person we're going to hear from is Justin Simpson, who's going to be giving, giving us a talk on environmental devastation and what our responsibility is in response to it. So everybody, could I please get a big round of applause for Justin Simpson. Have any of you ever seen the metaphor or heard the metaphor that modern humans are kind of like frogs in a pot of water? Raise your hands if you've ever seen this or heard the metaphor. In this case, the water is getting warmer and warmer, and the frog is not so smart. It doesn't realize it because it's gradual, and the frog stays there. It gets into kind of a, a placid stupor, and it doesn't do anything to change its environment until it's too late, and then the frog dies. And it's a sad story, but right now I think humans are unfortunately acting a lot like these frogs. We, many of us, I think, hopefully many of us in this room understand the issue of climate change, but not enough is being done. And I, I'm obviously kind of nervous about this because number one, this is really important to me. And number two, I made some assumptions about the people in this room. So raise your hand if you think Climate change is an important problem. Okay, now raise your hand again if you think this is an urgent problem. So far, so good. A little bit of my nerves being relieved. And now raise both hands if you think this is a problem that is worth changing your habits over and worth helping you make your decisions. Awesome, okay. Yes, I am much more confident now. Thank you very much. And um, so my goal tonight is um, mostly to encourage the people here to start really talking more about it and being more vocal. And I don't want to spend much time about why climate change is important, because you've already shown me that you understand it is. But there's a couple of things that I thought would be relevant especially to Vietnam. And so which of these things do you think is the most pressing problem for Vietnam? Any guesses? Paul? I'm going to go with the heat. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot of problems, and heat is definitely one of them. But among the countries in the world that are most at risk for having people displaced because of rising sea levels, Vietnam, as you can see, is number two. And this is data that predicts where the sea will be at the end of this century. Um, this is from a United Nations study, but also I found it on a Weather Channel website, and that's where I got the graphic from. Um, but good question. Thank you. And so if the sea level is going to... Um, continue to rise at the rates that people think it is, and it's going to accelerate. It's not a linear acceleration of sea level rise. You're going to see 23 million people potentially displaced in Vietnam. And Vietnam has over 3,200 kilometers of coastline. That's, that's a lot of people and a lot of land. And it doesn't obviously just affect Vietnam, but in many countries in the world, there's going to be between 300 and 600 million people that are potentially displaced. So I think people should think this is both important and really, really urgent. Uh, I know people are going to be talking about the urgency next week, too, and looking forward to hearing that. Um, so again, raise your hands if you think you can do more than you're already doing. I know I, I try to do a lot. I care a lot. But I know I can do more. And do you think everyone should do more? I think so. I think, unfortunately, it takes too much for any one organization to really make a difference. We all need to be educating each other. And um, so I think it's not good enough to be focused on the things that are bad and try to reduce the things that are bad. We really need to start doing more things that are good for the environment. And f I think. Among my friends in Hanoi, a lot of us are teachers, a lot of us are centers of influence, and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to start some conversations. And again, that's, that's 
the end goal after this presentation. I'm hoping that I can instill my passion in trying to talk about the environment and protect the environment towards everybody here so that we can educate the other people because <coughs> unfortunately there's just so many people that are apathetic and they don't care. And I don't think we should be pessimistic because what's the difference between a pessimist who thinks that, hey, it's too late, it's out of control, we can't stop this, and an optimist who thinks that well, human ingenuity, that has solved so many problems in the past. We don't really have to worry. I think in the end, there isn't much of a difference because either way, those people aren't going to be taking action. And so we really need to be thoughtful and mindful of everything that we do. And we need to do better to educate. And I, I wish we could have more of a top-down approach from governments. I think that is necessary um, sooner than later, obviously. But in the meantime, I don't want to sit idle and I want to associate myself with people who do really care. And so I'm working with my friend Jen, who has a program called Start With Green, and she's working with a group of 30 different students at two different locations, so 60 total, and they are taking materials that would otherwise be thrown away, like banners from old advertisements, and turning them into things that are useful, like reusable bags. And in the meantime, she's also educating people on communication and collaboration and creativity. And it's a, a wonderful program that is also sponsored by the United States Embassy at the American Education Center. Um, and in talking with some of the students, last week uh, I had uh, a 12-year-old boy tell me that one of the things that he really wants to see change in Vietnam is he wants people to stop burning stuff on the sidewalks. And I asked him, so how do you think that could best be accomplished. And although he's 12, he said, the government needs to do it. And I was like, yeah, y you're right. I, I really wish, sorry if I'm screaming into the microphone. I'm not used to that. Um, don't normally use microphones. Um, but I think um, we can learn from 12 year olds. 12 year olds can learn from us. And it, it's something that the more we talk about it, the more we can learn and the more we can educate. And um, people do really care, so we, we don't need to be pessimistic to the point that we think that it's too late. And uh, another example, there is a 12-year-old girl who said that if Vietnamese people are going to be complaining about China taking the sea and in the South China Sea and um, putting islands in the South China Sea and taking away Vietnam's uh, territory in that sea and taking away the resources that are in that sea, then Vietnamese people, they should really care about their beaches and they should keep them clean. And I thought, yeah, way to go, high five. And okay, th these people do care and I'm really happy to be associating myself with people that care and I think 100% of my friends do care about the environment and I'm proud to say that. And uh, another friend of mine, Zong has a business called Consortia, and she is creating art that is thought-provoking. And some of it is about the environment, others stuff is up to whoever buys the blank canvas bags and the blank t-shirts. And if you want, you can come to Quest, and you can create art that is thought-provoking, and then you can use it, and you can wear it, and then by showing it to people, talking about it, it's a way of starting conversations. And I think we all need to be more mindful of being able to coexist with each other. There's uh, people on islands that aren't going to have their islands. It's already happening. They're getting displaced. And people need to coexist with everybody and try to reduce how bad it's going to get. And in terms of the government in Vietnam, I think mm, this is at least one example of where they're saying something that makes me happy. I wish there'd be more of an actual policy change because from talking with people, I haven't heard of any Vietnamese people who have heard this statement, but the Prime Minister of Vietnam back in June said that Vietnam will not exchange environment for economic development. And I think that is a good thing to say, but I don't see that happening. And I, I wish we could have more people who would be able to talk to 
politicians and get things done. That can happen in some places, and if you know that, hey, like in the UK, I think in 2008, the citizens of UK, they voted to reduce their emissions by 80% by the year 2050. And that actually is a policy change. They're making things happen. And so here, maybe that doesn't work as well, so maybe we need to uh, start and do what we can, use what we have. But um, at least people are starting to talk about it. And this is a billboard that I saw in Dalat when I was there recently. And I like the art that they have, the propaganda style Vietnamese art. And on some of the slides you saw, I had a, a caption of saying what the translation meant. And um, so I think it's just nice to see that there are people that care, but at the same time, certainly not enough people are doing enough. And I, I feel like apathy and Apathy, if, if in case that is a new word, is showing lack of interest and lack of concern. And I think apathy is the root of the ignorance because people could find out about it if they were interested. There's plenty of evidence. It's indisputable that climate change is caused by humans. It's indisputable that it's happening. And yet, I think a lot of people in the world just don't have the education. And if the governments aren't going to do it, Again, I want to do something about it, and I hope you guys all want to do more about it also. I think we're already taking actions, and I know a lot of uh, vegans and vegetarians in the room, and I think that is a, a great way to reduce the impact that you have. But I think, for me, I wasn't talking about it enough, and that's why I'm here. And um, so who here is going to commit to being more vocal about these topics? Can I see another show of hands? Who wants to talk about this with the people they know? I'm and I thought, um, one quick story. I used to go to a lot of coffee shops and places, get smoothies, and ask, no straw. And so I'd say, come on, hoot. And then, out of habit, they'd give me the straw. And so I think if I tell them now, uh, Telling them that it's good for the environment, it's like, aha, ah, that's why. Then they understand, and I don't have to make weird facial gestures about the straw either. So I think this is a good thing to learn, and I'm going to make the PowerPoint. I, I've got a new and improved version of the PowerPoint, and I will make this available. Wow, it looked a lot better on my computer. <laughs> Damn. So this will be available, and you can learn from it later. And I... Um, uh, hmm. And there was supposed to be a song that would be in the background, but there's no play button on here. Oh, well. Um, so I think, uh, given the time, I, I just want to say that we need nature. There's no way around it. We need to protect nature for so many reasons. Nature doesn't need us. And so I really hope that you all can share in my passion and start talking more about the environment and start educating the people that maybe... They're not ignorant by choice. Maybe they just haven't had a chance to had a, have a conversation. And so uh, please go out there and speak up. I know this is a like-minded, thoughtful, intelligent crowd. And I'm looking forward to having more conversations with you all here and with people everywhere. Thank you for listening. Yeah.